Hi, welcome back to my channel. My name is Rachel. That is the R in the R case Stumbling Bear, and I am a reader and a writer. And I am back for my last favorites of 2023, this time nonfiction, memoir, and miscellaneous. One of my goals in 2023 was to read a nonfiction a quarter, and I think I I did pretty well. Mostly thanks to my husband since he insisted that I read two of these books that are up here. And I have five items on this one. So with nonfiction, I still use the Copile system, Gia Book Roast. She has a Copile version for nonfiction, and I find that it equates really well. But jumping on in with number five, I have Sex Talks by Dr. Vanessa Marin and Xander Marin. Vanessa is a sex therapist and her husband co-authored the book with her. They have their own business where they talk about intimacy and sex with a wider audience. I found out about this book from Margaret Bernard and because I have some nice romance stories in mind, I thought that this was intriguing because it is about conversations about sex, not about the actual acts of sex. And reading this truly was eye-opening for me in a lot of really good ways. I now know that anybody who tells me that, oh, I'm getting married, this is the present they're going to be getting from me. Because the conversations about sex and how to talk about sex and to be comfortable with your partner talking about sex and the fact that your comfort and your type of conversations are going to change throughout your relationship and your life is very, very important to understand. We need to untaboo sex, basically. And I really enjoyed this, and I know that I will reread it in the future. And I think it, if you like romance books, this is a really good read. Also, if you are a romance writer, because of the type of conversations that you have in here, you can use those as plot elements for conversations with your characters. This year I also read Crucible of Hell by Saul David. This was a book that my husband really wanted me to read after he had read it, and it is about the Battle of Okinawa. However, Saul David doesn't just take one side or one perspective. He shows you the American perspective, the Japanese perspective, the Okinawa perspective, the British perspective, many different players that were coming to this battle and what it was like. He takes from journal entries, interviews, newspaper articles, a wide variety of sources to bring a cohesive narrative of what was going on. And he doesn't blame fault at anyone's feet. That's not the purpose of this book. The purpose is just to say what happened and why were people thinking of that. I think the most interesting point of view for me was the Okinawans and it had multiple from different generations. So the older generations were like, you know, this war is stupid, to the younger generations who had been indoctrinated in school to be patriotic and really thought that this was a good thing. And then anyone talked about from interviews from those people who had participated in the war from a, like just a, you know, maybe five, 10 years younger, that next group of people like, asking them, why did you do this? And they're like, you got to understand that's what we were being taught. Really, really made me appreciate public education so much more and how the curriculum that is chosen is extremely important. It's extremely important to have an honest narrative and not to skew one way or the other. So this was a very enlightening read. I enjoyed that my husband got to share this with me and then we got to talk about it. And then another book that he shared with me was The Inconvenient Indian by Thomas King. My husband is Native American, he is Kiowa, and when he read this book, he said that he felt seen. So, of course, I knew that I was going to read it after he was done. 
This book goes into events of history in the United States and Canada surrounding colonialism, expansionism, but even into modern times with modern laws. If you know nothing about white and Native American relations, this is a great place to start. But even if you do, this is still a great place to start. I think one of the most compelling conversations from this book is the conversation about the dead Indian, the live Indian, and the legal Indian, and how they're not the same thing. And many white people are looking for the dead Indian, and they don't accept the live Indian, and mess around with what is actually a legal Indian. I think this is a book that everybody who lives in North America should be reading. My husband and I are hoping to have a more in-depth conversation about this book here in the future, and if we do, I will have it on my channel as a podcast. If you don't pick up any other nonfiction book in 2024, this is the one you need to read. All right, next I have Broken Places and Outer Spaces by Nanetia Korafor. This is her memoir. As a child or teenager, she was diagnosed with scoliosis, and as she grew to be an adult, it, they determined that a surgery would be the best thing for her. During the surgery, she got overcorrected and she was paralyzed from the waist down. And this is her memoir of that experience, which also brought her to writing science fiction. And it really gives you a basis of how she approaches writing science fiction. It's really, it's just a memoir of a short period of time but she is one of my favorite authors, so it was really enlightening to read this book, this short memoir. And then at the number one slot, I have Black Eyed Peas and Hoghead Cheese by Glinda Armand, and the illustrator is Steffi Walthall. Yes, this is a children's picture book that I just absolutely loved. I love the art style. I love the story that is here. It's about a young girl who is working with her grandmother to help prepare the New Year's meal. And in their family, they have a lot of traditional foods. And so grandma's explaining why they do certain foods and where they came from. And I just love this as like a family intergenerational piece, as a children's book. I think it works amazingly well. And it has remained one of my favorites all year long. So what were some of your favorite nonfiction or memoirs or children's books of 2023? I'd love to know. Thank you and have a great day.